Good day everybody and welcome to this webinar about Tridem Picador. We'll go over who is Tridem, what is the Picador suite, all the modules one by one, and then in the end of course, if you have any questions we can answer them. First off, Tridem. Tridem is a French company, they are based in Paris and they focus on computer-aided design and PLM software. They have over 4,000 companies using the Picador suite worldwide. If we know that some small year ago, those were only about 3,200 companies, we can see that the amount of users is steadily increasing and there is a reason for that. The software is actually really good. The software focuses on structural design of packaging, display materials, and point of sales materials. Picador actually exists out of five separate modules that together form the Picador suite. And I shall go over them one by one to explain what they do and how they are connected to each other. The first module is called Packlip. Packlip is a database, a library of packagings. It contains standards such as the ECMA and the FEFCO standards, but also specific libraries based around point of sales, or of course your own custom libraries if you would like those. It also features adaptable designs. This means, for example, the entire FEFCO library has actually been parameterized so you can easily change the width, depth and height of any of those packagings. And then, of course, you can export any drawing in the library to Illustrator. We'll see why that is the case, PDF or Picador and a variety of other formats. The main application is actually Picador Geometry or Picador 2D. This is the drawing application. So this is where you can make your own CAD drawings or edit existing CAD drawings, for example, those coming from Packlip. You can import or export a whole range of different file formats, making this a very open application that fits in pretty much any existing workflow. And it has the ability to create parametric models, which you can then use inside Packlip, as I said earlier. You can say, oh, if it's just a CAD application, there are lots of CAD applications. Why should we go for Picador? Well, Picador has been designed specifically for packaging, and it has several features that make it a lot easier to work with to draw packaging than some other applications. There is also Picador 3D. This can help you do automatic 2D to 3D folding of your drawings. So if you have a drawing in Picador 2D, you can bring it to 3D and fold it into its final shape. You can then animate this folding step by step to show either your customer or anyone in your company how the box is meant to be folded. And you can even extend that animation to the whole assembly if you have a more complex packaging or point of sale material that exists out of different parts. You can have those parts interact with each other and complete the assembly of the product. Then you can also import graphics and objects. Graphics, of course, if you want the artwork to be on the box. And objects, if you want, for example, to include the actual product you're packaging into the 3D animation. Then you can export this whole set as either a 3D PDF, which is good because it's a very open format, or any possible 3D model. And there are also some external partners 3 works with for extended uh, reality, like augmented reality or virtual reality applications. The fourth module is called Stack Builder. Stack Builder is more of a logistics application which can help you determine what the optimal way is to fill a case with your box or to palletize those cases or to load those pallets in a truck or all of the above. There is also a feature for strength analysis of such a pallet of the boxes and you can gets this whole thing as a nice, clean HTML report. And then there is the cutting application from which you can control 
pretty much all cutting tables. You can see the list here. If you have a table that is not in the list, there is a good chance it is also supported. If for some bizarre reason it is not supported, Treedim will definitely help you extend the support of the application to include your table as well. The cutting application also helps you with imposition and sheet optimization, and it can do either cutting or milling. Now, this isn't really a production tool. This is more of a prototyping tool. So let's say you are creating your own packaging and you want to have it in your hands, fold it, see if everything works out the way you want it. You can send it to the cutting table, have it cut, go collect it, see if anything is wrong with it, make some small changes and send it back to the cutting table. In your normal workflow, you would just send the file to the workflow and have it find its way. But it's a really nice tool if you want to be quick. Let us jump straight into the demonstration of the product. You can see I am working with the windows right now. The Picador applications over here are actually windows applications. Now I was showing you my presentation on a Mac. I am actually working with a MacBook Pro. So this is running on a virtual machine. This is not a problem. It runs really smoothly. So even if you don't have a Windows, you can still use the Picador Suite if you are running a virtual machine like I am. There are five applications and all five of them are here on my desktop. I shall go over them from the top to the bottom. Let's start with the first application, Backlip. Okay, here we are. This is the start screen for Packlip. We have the root folder on the top left here. As I said, it's just a database. So you have the root folder and then you have all the folders in there and then in there you have packagings. So in the database, we have, as I said, the ECMA and FEFCO library. If I click FEFCO, for example, we will get all the different categories. Then I can click a certain category, then I can click a certain box, let's say I'll click this box. Then we have the 2D drawing for the box and the 3D model. If I click the drawing, we will see the drawing. And at the right, we can see all the parameters for this specific drawing. So it's not just the drawing, it also has all these settings. If I go to the length, for example, we can see that any measurement of the box that has to do with the length can be changed. The same way for anything to do with the width, anything to do with the height, the extension of the flaps. Uh, if we want to have control over the glue flaps, we can do that as well. If we want to have hands holds, I can create hand holes in the box. All of these are parameters. Now, for the entire Fefco library, as I said, these are already present. For some other packagings in the library, this is not the case. If you need these for some specific model, you can ask us, you can ask Treedem. We will happily help you get one of these done. But in the end, you can actually create these yourself inside Picador 2D, but that is actually a whole separate webinar, so we might do that separate video at some point. Okay, so let me go back to the root. And you can see I also have a folder here called four piece. If I click four piece, there are some packagings in here. So this is part of the reason why Packlip is so easy to use. You can actually add all your own variations of packaging. So either completely custom drawings or just variations on the libraries. You can see this is actually a Fefco 201. Uh, to your own folder and you can get them there. So that means you can have a folder for your company with all your most used boxes. You can have a folder for your specific clients for each of them and you know their packagings are in there. That way you can organize your stuff easily inside the Backlip library. Now, if you have the library, if you have your drawings and they are properly parameterized, you actually don't have to open the to the application a lot because you can just get your box, edit the size to what you want and export it and you're done. Of course, if you want to edit this, you can say go to pick Geom, Picador Geometry or Picador 2D. All of those are the same application. It opens in the 2D application and you can say, oh, maybe I want to have a hole in the side of my box. I can add a hole in the side of my box. 
So it's very easy to take a packaging that exists in Packlab, bring it to the 2D application, make some changes, and then use that box. That way you don't have to draw everything from scratch and you don't have to stick to base models. You can actually make it completely personal. Let me close that up again. Back in the library. So if I go to the root again, there is one more thing that I would like to show you in Packlab, and it is over here. It is called Smart Assembly. This shows exactly how far we can go with the parameterized models. I'll go for the smart box, but there is also a specific one for cases and for double wall cases. Now if I open this, we see this very base model for a box. So you just have the four sides and a glue flap. You can decide how big you want those to be. So you can decide the length of the box, the width of the box, and the height of the box. Exactly the same way we have seen before. You can also decide the thickness of the carton, which is also important because this will also decide partially how big some parts of the box are. Then we have the top style and bottom style. And this is really where this gets cool. If I click on the top style, I can say, let's say I want a tuck end on this box. There we are, we have this thing, we have the side flaps all automatically created. If I change sizes, they automatically adapt with the size of the box. You can see everything changes the size as well. And then we can say, maybe I don't want to have a symbol. Maybe I want to have a lock tongue for that. There we are, we get this. We get this small slit in the top here as well. Once again, parameterized. Then I can go to the bottom style. Maybe I want this to be a semi-auto crash lock. There we are, we have it. We created our own custom box in like, what, half a minute? That's how fast this is to work with, and it's all exactly the, the size we want and the part we want. We don't need to draw a thing. So this is also a nice feature in the Packlip application. Then, of course, we can draw this to the 2D application, we can drag this to the 3D application, and we can see how this specific box will work for us. So that is pretty much Packlip. I'll close the application for now. And we'll go over to the second application called Picador, which is the main drawing application. Here we are in a blank Picador sheet. Okay, in Picador, let me zoom out a little bit. We have the X axis and the Y axis, and we have all the tools all along the frame of the application. Now, how the application looks, where the tools are, is actually up to you. You can see if I take these text tools, I can drag them around, I can put them in a separate bar, I can actually place those where I want them to be. So your application might not look exactly like my application, but it might be better for you personally. There is no, no one forcing you to work with it the way I have it set up right here. On my left though, I have the drawing tools. So all of these are tools that I can use to draw my model. Then at the top, I have some manipulation tools. Over here, I have everything that has to do with dimensions. And over here, I have everything to do with the parameterized models. The blue ones, as I said before, are text tools. Anything you draw in here can be drawn using different structure lines. So I can open this up. You can see I have cut lines, perfo crease, per, uh, construction lines, perforations, crease lines. I have a lot of different line types. When using these line types, they will be a spot color and a separate layer. So you can use them in pretty much any workflow to determine what kind of line you want them to be. Now I'll draw a model here. Let me use the rectangle tool. I'll click the center. You can, you might be able to see my cursor changes its look and it selects the exact center of those two axes. Having the cursor do that makes it very easy to draw extremely accurately. Lines will always exactly touch each other. They will not cross, they will not have little gaps and that makes it a lot better to work with than for example, Illustrator, where often the problem is that the lines cross or not exactly touch each other, creating not completely closed cutting lines for the table. In Picador, there are a lot of small tools that help you make sure everything is fine. I can tap the X button to get this. 
With this, I can actually determine how large I want this rectangle to be. So let's say I want to have a 100 millimeters to the, on the x-axis and I want to have 50 millimeters on the y-axis. I'll confirm and I get exactly that size of rectangle. Now another tool that is really cool is the Add a Face tool. If I click this tool, I get a different kind of cursor. I can select this line and you can see it draws an extra face from this line. I can once again press my X on the keyboard and I get a different window, distances, because they're always going around the X axis now, so I don't have to determine that specifically. I will say the thickness of my box is 1.5 millimeters and the length of this flap I want to be 50. OK. You can see it actually added two faces because of those instructions, one being 1.5 millimeters and one being 50. And the lines in between have been automatically converted to be folding lines instead of cutting lines. I made this, this gap because it will be useful later in the structure of this box. Now we'll add another face over here that I want to be 50 and I will add a flap over here that I want to be 45. Now you can see later this flap will fold upwards, this flap will fold upwards and the thickness of the carton of this will be exactly this. That means I don't need this fold line, I only need this outer fold line. So I will use my eraser tool to erase that fold line already. Now I only drew one quarter of the box that I want to draw. So I can use a selection tool, box selection, that selects everything I hover over right now. I have my box selected and I can use the manipulation tools to symmetrically copy the box I have over a vertical axis. Then I can click the vertical axis. I do not want to delete the original. And now I have half a box. I can do the exact same thing again. Use the box selection tool, select everything. Say I want to copy it over the horizontal axis this time. Once again, click the axis, not the, the original. And now I have a box. Now, of course, we have these cutting lines going through them. We do not want those. So I shall again use the box selection, select those lines and remove them. I think, yes, indeed, because I made that extra gap earlier. This is a separate line, so I can also just click the eraser tool and erase those lines. There we are. Okay, so now we have one part of our box. Now I can use, for example, the dimension tools. There is one that is called automatic dimensions. If I click this, we can see all around my box, all the dimensions have been added in the green line tool. So you can see my box is now 200 by 100. The flaps are 50 in height and the thickness of the carton in this space is 1.5 millimeters. You can see all that right now. Now, of course, when I'm drawing a lot of lines, this green text might not be nice for me to have. You can have the filters on the right to temporarily remove these from your view. So you only see what you want to see at any given time. Now, I can draw my, I'll leave this on for now actually, I can draw my second box. So I will use the rectangle tool again. I will move aside a little bit and I can draw a new rectangle. I want this box to be out of two parts because that shows an extra feature in the 3D module later on. So I can click the X button again and I get my values. Now, of course, I need to take into account how big my box has become because I have to take into account the thickness of the cardboard. So my X is no longer 100. It is now 100 plus two thicknesses. So I have to make it 103. And then the Y is no longer 50, it is now 51.5, because I want this to be the lid and I want it to be able to fit around the bottom and otherwise it won't fit. So I have 
this one again. Then I will use the add a face to add the faces again. I'll press the X button. I'll say once again, the thickness is 1.5 and the height I want to be 45 in this case, because I want to have a little height difference between my lid and my bottom. We have those. I'll add a face here being 45 again, and I'll even add a face here being 45 again. Okay, so let's zoom back in and erase that extra line we don't want. Then I can select this part of the box. I can manipulate it, copy it over a vertical axis. I can select it again, manipulate it over the horizontal axis. And I have all this. Now I'll have to erase all those pesky cutting lines that I don't want in my drawing. And there we go, we have two parts of our box. So now you've seen me do it twice. Uh, I have only used two tools right now. I have only used the rectangle tool and the add a face tool, and already I've been able to draw a pretty nice box. There's a lot more tools that can help you change the small details. For example, maybe I don't want to have this corner be like a straight corner. Maybe I want it to be rounded. I can actually make it a rounded corner quite easily. And this will create a perfectly closed semicircle, well, quarter circle in this case, with that tool. Now, maybe it's not uh, a rounded off corner I want. Maybe I want it to be a angled corner, so I can once again give a dimension. This time I'll have to give the angle I want that corner to be at, and you can see now it's an angled corner. So, let me zoom in, there we are. You can actually edit these in a lot of ways. Then there's also another type of line that I haven't used yet, and those are the construction lines. So we have uh, vertical and horizontal construction lines, but also uh, orthogonal lines, parallel lines at a distance, and angled construction lines. So that way you can draw a non-permanent line, for example, on the middle of this line I can draw this line, or on an angle in between this line and that corner, I might want to have an angle of 45 degrees, and I can add that line as well. This can help you make specific adjustments to the box you're drawing, because they also interact with your mouse pointer when you go over them. So you can mark specific spots that you want to have your line end up in, and because you can determine the location of these lines based on your distances, you can be very accurate in where you and have those lines end up. And once again, you can see a filter was added over here on the right called construction. I can actually make those disappear because sometimes you have a lot of lines going on and if I draw a new construction line, let's say, well, here again, you can see now I have a new construction line drawn but the other ones are still gone so you only have to see the construction lines you're actually using at any given time and then you can just make it disappear again. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Picador 2D. Uh, I haven't gone over the parametric designs, but as I said, that's a whole new subject and that'll be uh, a bit too much. There is another thing you can do here and it's called technical data sheets. To create a printable A4 page, for example, that contains your drawing and a lot of variables you want about that drawing. So the name, the customer, the length of the cutting lines, for example, you can do a lot of information on those sheets. Let's move on to the 3D application. From every module, you have links to the other modules. So I showed you that in the Packlip, when we went to this application, we had a link to the 2D and the 3D. Over here, we have a link to 3D and to the cutting table module. So if I click the 3D Folds button, oh, of course, I have to save my file. So I'll click the Save button and I'll put it on my desktop and I'll call it Box because I am a very original person. Then I'll click the 3D Fold button, and we open the Picador 3D application. Okay, in the 3D application, we start by seeing our drawing the exact same way we see it in the 2D application, and we even get a few drawing tools here. So we get some, some tools with which we can adjust our drawing if that happens to be necessary. 
that makes it so if you see something happening in the in the 3D fold that you think, oh, that's not right, you can easily adjust some small details here, and then you don't have to go back to the 2D and back to the 3D applications. Okay, so at the top here, we actually have five different tools which we can use to add 3D objects to our assembly. The first one is import from library. If I click that, a specific library will open containing already a set of 3D models. We can see 3 dim is a French company because they included an Eiffel Tower. Usually I go for the Coke can in my examples. So let's say I open the Coke can and we get a 3D model of a Coke can here in our 3D parts list. Back to the 2D parts. Uh, the second button is import new solid. This is the exact same thing as the import from library, but instead of using anything that is already in the Picador library, you can actually use any 3D file you have yourself. So you can see right now, I am attempting to upload a Penguin 3D file that is on my desktop for my Mac. So you can upload any uh, 3D model you already have. So maybe you have a 3D scan of your product, maybe you have an actual nice 3D model of your product, you can enter it straight away. And then we have the Solid by Revolution tool. You can use this to create a solid uh, shape out of, for example, half a bottle, the way it's shown in the tool here. You can draw one line and then have it rotate it around its center to create a solid part. If I use this button with the drawing I have right now, it'll just look like a giant donut, but we can have a look at that. So I'll just click it, I'll call it revolution. Say okay, and we get a 3D model that is basically a giant donut because it's rotated everything around the center line. So that is not very useful for this thing, but you can use it to create a 3D uh, model of, for example, a bottle or something simple like a cylinder, if you want that. Back to the 3D entities. The last one is solid by extrusion. This does exactly what it sounds like. So instead of revolving around the center, it will just extrude upwards. I'll call this extrusion. Say, okay, you can determine the length here. And we have a extruded form for our boxes. So also not very useful here, but you can probably find a way to make that useful. Something interesting about all these tools is that you can actually have them interact with each other. And I will show you that in a minute using the code can. So I skipped one on purpose, the create new foldable solid. And that's what you will use when you're making 3D shapes out of your drawings from Picador 2D. So I'll click that one. I can call this top. Let's start with the top. Say, Okay, and nothing happens. And why is that? Because Picador doesn't know if I'm trying to use this drawing or this drawing. And Picador doesn't know yet what part of the drawing I want to be the solid uh, part that is stuck to the bottom, the reference pane. So I'll go to the top, which is my left drawing, and I'll click on the middle pane, which is gonna be my reference pane. So I'll click that, and we get a sheet of cardboard here, a 3D shape. Now, I personally like to have my view in perspective and to have the lines visible, because it makes it a lot easier to fold the box. In default, the brown part is the inside of the carton and the white part is the outside of the carton. Now, if I go to the bottom here, we get this whole new thing. We have this slider. I can slide the slider and the packaging will fold all the folding lines inwards 90 degrees. And then we get our closed box. But of course, this isn't very useful to anybody because a human wouldn't be folding the specific box that way. So I'll fold it open again and I'll go to the second tab called definition by step. First of all, I should set the thickness to 1.5 because that is the thickness I had in mind when I was drawing earlier. So in step zero, nothing is folded. In step one, everything is folded. That means we can insert a step here. We can choose the angle we want to fold the part at, and then we can just click the parts we want to fold. So I'll just fold up the glue flaps. 
Then I can insert another step and I can fold upwards the sides of the box and we can see them fold in. And I do not need to insert the last step because there is already a third step in which everything is closed, which is what would happen next anyway. Now, if I go back to the definition by face and I click the play button for our slider, we will see that it folds up the glue flaps first, then the sides, and then eventually the front and the back. And there we are, our box is folded and we have a nice animation for how we want it to be folded. Then, of course, we have a step in which we can add the exterior material for the box. Now, we don't have the artwork for that yet, so I'll go back to the 2D application where we have this drawing. I'll remove the dimension lines for now, and I can export, file, export, this as an illustrator file. I can call it box, I'll put it on the desktop so I can find it easily, and it is an illustrator file. You can see there is actually a lot of different file formats you can export this as. But for now, I'll choose illustrator, I'll say save, and we should have it appear on the desktop. There we are. We will see that we have one big art box here containing both of our uh, drawings. And we have separate layers for registration marks, for crease lines, half cut, cut lines, and annotations. So these are in layers, but they are also in spot colors. Now for this to work, I will need to add my artwork. So I can just put some penguins on there. Let's see if we can do that nicely. Something like this perhaps, okay. So we have our penguins on there. And then I also want to change the art box size for these to have just the packagings themselves. So if I go to the art box tool, I can actually say I want my artwork to be from here to here to this cut line and then the final one to this cut line, that will be my uh, first artboard, and I will create a second artboard the size of my second drawing. It's necessary to have these uh, only to the end of the cutting line, because that is what the 3D application will use to uh, put the artwork on the box. Okay, so now I have my two artboards, one for my top and one for my bottom of my box. I can actually export these say for web i'll use the legacy shape okay so we can have those become jpegs in the exact size well you know whatever that doesn't really matter i can have them in a certain size and i can have them clipped to the artboard and we should have them for both our artboards so i can say save put it on my desktop Okay, so now I can go back to the 3D application. Oh, I drew a line, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I can go back to, to the application, I can have the 3D application here, and I can go to the exterior material. Now we can set a color for that. So we have, you can see the colors changing on the box. If you want to it to, give, to have a specific color, you can do that, but you can also give it a texture. And a texture basically means add an image. Now I can say add, I can go to my desktop and I can open a file for that. So you can see now I have my artwork, which is a JPEG exported from Illustrator all over this box. Now you can do the same thing for the interior material in the following tab. Of course, probably your interior doesn't have a specific uh, artwork, but you can still add a texture. Actually, when you install the Picador application, you can go to the C folder. So if I go to my this PC and then the C drive, you actually have a folder called WPicador. This is automatically created when you install the application. And in there we have a folder called bin 8 3D. And in there we have a folder called textures. In textures you get this base set of textures that's automatically added uh, that comes with Picador. 
Now I have a carton in here, I can click that and I can give the inside carton. Of course, this isn't a very, I don't, I don't feel like it's a very high res texture, but uh, maybe it's better than yellow, you know. And then of course, we can also give the material edge a texture. So if I scroll and zoom in now, we can see the material edge is now corrugated board. You can determine the direction for that here with the X or the Y. You can change which sides have that texture and which sides have the uh, like cut open side. Okay, then there is one more tab I haven't told you about and it's the reference tab. This determines on the X, Y, Z axis where this box is popped into the assembly. So I'll leave it where it is right now. Then we can go back to the 2D entities. We can do the same thing. So create foldable solid call this bottom, say OK, select the other part we want to have, and we have a new sheet of carton. I'll put it in perspective and I'll draw the lines because I like to see it that way. And for this one, I'll just like fold it in, put the thickness correctly, and we have it like this. Now, of course, I want to have the artwork on it at least, so I'll pick the texture. Uh, on the desktop, I have the texture for the bottom, which is just the text about the penguin treats. Okay, and now we have our two boxes. I'll also make the material on the C drive. So on the C drive, we have W Picador, we have bin 8 3D, and then textures, and I'll click the carton. Oh, this one as well, and then the material edge, the texture loads automatically, so you can just have it uh, like that. So now that I have my top and my bottom all worked out, I can put them into the assembly. So I'll put the top in there just by dragging it from the parts to the assembly. You can decide where you want that reference point to end up. Say OK. I take the bottom, I draw it into the assembly, decide where it's end up, okay. And now if I go to the assembly, we can see we have all our parts we put in there and we can see the inside of the box fits exactly within the outside of the box. So the measurements I made earlier are perfect. Now, I can actually move all of these things around. So let's say I want to move the can out of the way first. I can actually say move out of the way. Oops, that's a bit far, maybe 200. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll put the can upright by turning it like that and move it up to the box's ground level, something like that. Okay, so now we have a co-can and a box that is just loaded inside itself. I can actually move the bottom aside as well. So I'll move it somewhere over here and I can decide how folded they are. So I can put them completely flat, maybe a little bit more so the other box can go flat as well. I'll take the top and I'll flatten that as well. Okay, so now we have two sheets of carton and a Coke can sitting on the floor. Now we have the exact same options we had before to create a little animation for this. So we have our steps here. So now step zero, is this, this thing I drew just now. So I can insert a step and I can decide in this first step, I want both boxes to be folded 100%. So I can select my bottom and my top and change the folded state to 100. Now, the, the fun thing is it actually keeps what you've done to it before. So if I say, okay, we can see the boxes are folded exactly the way I made them fold themselves in the parts section. So you can create your foldings first and then have the whole complicated assembly come together afterwards. That way you don't have to go step by step with tons of pieces on your assembly floor. And you only have to do it once if you want to have separate animations and the assembly. So of course I can insert another step, move the box upwards and draw it around, insert another step where I have the box go on top of the other half. Oh, I'm actually putting the bottom on inside the top instead of putting the top over the bottom. And another step where it goes down. And now I want it to be exactly where 
it was meant to be, which is something like this. And now let's say I want them both to be turned around 90 degrees because that'll make a very interesting video. Okay, and now I have my box all folded up and I can actually say play this animation. We can see it folds itself up. Then you can see over there the bottom is moving around. It goes over the top. It moves downwards. Well, and then everything happens at the same time because I didn't make a new step for that. And our box is magically folded together. We can see we have the top here, we have the bottom here, and our box is completely animated. Now the animation or the thing can be exported in a few ways. You can just export it as a 3D model, but you can, uh, for example, STL, OBJ, DA files, Colada files, object files. But you can also uh, create a 3D PDF from that. So if I click this button, you can see where it's going. So it's going to home desktop box.pdf, which is what I like. And it's selecting a template for how the PDF will look. That's interesting. I'll tell you why in a second. I'll click generate. The file is being generated and it will automatically open in my Acrobat Reader. Acrobat Reader is, of course, a free tool, which means that any of your customers can have that installed on their system and can use it to open this file and see exactly what we just saw. The viewer, however, is not very beautiful, but it is still functional in plenty of quality for the purpose, which is just showing how it all comes together. You can see everything around here. So it says Picador 3D Expert PDF document. We can have generated by Picador 3D with these uh, explanations over here. All of this is part of that template that was selected before. So you can have this be Portrait A4 with your own logo on there and the view box on a certain place. You can actually completely edit this the exact way you want this 3D PDF to be just by selecting a different template which you can create yourself. So you can have your logo on there, you can have your fonts, you can have your colors, everything you want to uh, have your company be the center of attention on this thing. I'll close the Acrobat. Then we have some more things which are the external partners. So Tridem partnered up with Augmented, with Sketchfab and with Clee 3 d with this application. Augmented is a tool which you can use just by printing a target to view from that target, from a digital online library, 3D augmented reality objects on your phone. So you have to download the app and then you can aim your phone's camera at that target, which you can just print from their online website. And you can move your phone around the target to see every side of that box as an augmented reality model on your desk. Then Sketchfab is pretty much like Instagram for 3D models. So you have an account, you can put all your packagings on there. Uh, if you're like showing off special things you've done with Picador, special boxes you created, you can put those on Sketchfab, you can share links. Everybody can watch the models and can see your designs. And then there is Clee 3 d which does pretty much what Augmented does. It's also an augmented reality application. But you can put your box inside a store on the shelves next to other products, which means you can see how your box looks in between you know, a store environment, which can be interesting for branding purposes. Uh, both Augmented and Clee 3 d are paid models, so you have to have an account with them and a paid subscription, I believe. For Sketchfab, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's free to watch, but you have to have an account to upload. And then you can also export the animation as a video. You can choose between a Windows Media Player file or, or a .avi file, and you can choose the frame rate and the duration of the video and export that, and then do with that as you please. Now, something I skipped over before is how to interact certain things. I can say I want a solid foldable intersection. Click that. You can see the imported solid is my Coke can. And the foldable I wanted to interact with is the top. I can say OK. And now nothing has happened because I hadn't moved the Coke can yet. But let's move the Coke can like inside the box. You can see it's clearly too big for the box, which means if I want to be able to put it in the box, I will have to have to put it through the lid of the box. But to make it a little bit more interesting and show off the functionality, I will actually put it through 
the entire uh, corner of the box. You can see it's in there. Then I can do the whole intersection part, say OK. And if I go back to my 2D entities, you can see now there is this ex these extra lines on the box, extra cutting lines. If I make a 3D foldable solid for this box coke, and I fold that up using the slider, we can actually see the 3D model we have has the exact hole where the coke can was. So, of course, for this, this isn't very useful, but let's say you have a box where you put in a bottle of wine or a bottle of liquor, and you have inserts inside that box that are placed, for example, diagonally to support that bottle inside the box. Having the cutout made for that bottle shape inside those inserts is going to be a pretty big calculation. But you can actually just do it like this. So you have a 3D model of your bottle, you have your box with your inserts inside and without holes in the inserts. Put your bottle in there, have those intersect, and you will have the exact holes you need in your inserts. So it's a nice little feature that the 3D application has. I've been going about the uh, 3D application for a long time now. It's probably time we move on to the Stack Builder application, the logistics part. In Stack Builder, we have, let me open up a file I have ready. Okay, we can, we can decide how big our product is. So in this particular example, our product is a matchbox containing 240 matches that weighs 43 grams and is exactly these dimensions. I can say okay or cancel because I didn't do anything with it. And we have a case, which is where I want to package my matchboxes in. And the case is a 40 by 30 by 20 case, which is pretty standard. Then I can have Stack Builder create an, anal an analysis for this, which, did, which calculates how many of those matchboxes actually fit inside that case. So we can see the example of the most efficient calculation here, but there are actually a lot of other ways you can place those inside that case. So this being the most efficient way and what it looks like also the most logical way to do it, contains 150 of these matchboxes inside a case. This is an efficiency for the space of 92.43% and the entire case will weigh about 6.45 kilos. So that is uh, the most efficient way. You can see if you go around to other options, if you like one of those others better, you can select those, you can see the efficiency for that and the weight for the box when you choose that. Once we have selected our choice for this, we can have a palette defined. We can decide how big a standard palette is and we can make an anal analysis for those boxes on a palette. So it's the same thing. You have your palette defined, we have our boxes defined and it calculates how to put those boxes on that palette. Now in this case, I don't agree with Packlip. I would not choose this uh, configuration because all the boxes are just stacked on top of each other and that isn't very stable. However, it created a second suggestion here, which interlayers and just uh, flips the layer around every time, which makes a much more stable way to stack these boxes. I like that, I'll take that one. And then if you want, you can actually have a truck analysis, so I can say add a truck analysis, I can select the truck I want to use, and it's the exact same way as before, we can have our uh, pallets in a, inside a truck, once again how many pallets, how many cases, how the efficiency is for the space inside the truck, and what the load of the truck will be if we do this. It gives options again. And then Naturally, it's nice to see it on the screen, but it's even better if you see it on paper because the people loading the trucks won't be looking at their screens. You can create an HTML report, which will look like this, and which will contain the size of the case, the size of the pallet, the way we want to stack those cases onto the pallet, the way the layers look, and the size of the truck, and how you want those pallets to go inside the truck. Of course, this can also contain the box in case analysis, but it's not in the specific set I just chose. You can see this as your logo here, 
the cool thing is this is an HTML template. That means you can actually just create CSS for this and have it be your own custom report. So you can change the colors we have here, you can change the logo, you can change these boxes, everything, and you can change the fonts. Have fun with it. You can make this completely custom and your own company style. And that is the Stack Builder application. So I will close the Stack Builder application as well, and we will go to, to the cutting application. Now if I open the cutting application we can see it opens a Suma cutting machine but you can actually go to the table, select a table and have the whole list of available tables at the moment right here. If you select the table you're using it will just make the sheet the size for that table. Now of course this is just an empty sheet. Normally if we are in the 2D application and we say we want to go to the cutting table we can click the launch Decoupe, and we can see our drawing on to the cutting table. Now this is supports step and repeat, it supports imposition, and it can even do sheet optimization on its own and put everything on there the way which is most efficient. But as I said before, this is mostly meant as a prototyping application to quickly send something to the table and have it cut out. Okay, and that was the last module. Thank you for joining us today and check out the other videos on our channel. Have a nice day.